This is Shuttle Launch Control at T minus three hours in holding. We are just five hours shy of the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on its STS 124 mission to the International Space Station. Discovery is scheduled to do a 14 day mission to the International Space Station, and we have the ability to stay docked for at least going into launch an extra day if needed. And that still gives us two weather wave off days if we're not able to come down on June 14th, Saturday morning, to uh, end the flight. Launch controllers are not working any problems right now that would prevent us from lifting off at 5.02 p.m. Eastern. And we're getting very close to uh, getting video inside the operations and checkup building. In fact, we're so close, we're here. There's the STS-124 crew suiting up. That's Commander Mark Kelly. And his pilot, Ken Ham. That's our lead spacewalker for the this mission, Mike Fossum. He's had one flight before with actually with Mark Kelly on the STS-121 mission last. There's Greg Shamatov talking to Mark Kelly's brother. You're not seeing double. He does have a twin, and uh, Mark's flying. And Scott flew last year on the STS-118 mission. Greg will be uh, giving a lot of thumbs up because uh, he'll be spending the next six months or so uh, on the International Space Station. He's going to be re replacing Garrett Reisman. Aki Hoshide. This is Hoshide's first flight into space. He was uh, born in Tokyo, Japan, but did spend four years here in the United States. It's Dr. Karen Nyberg. She'll be making her first flight on this mission. And finally, we have Ron Guerin, also making his first flight. He's a colonel in the U.S. Air Force, and uh, he's one of our mission specialists. And we've got uh, the SCS-124 Discovery crew yeah, walking their way down. You can see Commander Mark Kelly and Pilot Ken Ham leading the way. Greg Shamatov, our station astronaut, who's going to be switching out. Also, Chief of our office, Steve Lindsay, Brent Jett, who's the lead of the Flight Crew Operations Division, and uh, the other gentleman in the blue suit there is Jerry Ross, one of our veteran astronauts and the lead of the Vehicle Integration Test Team Office. You can see the crowd of uh, employees from KSC there that will meet them. just saw right now when you uh, line up there and head into the Astro van. Really, that brings it home that you're really actually about ready to launch. This is a, it's for real. And the crew's uh, beginning to exit the Astro van taking their, uh, you can see their helmet bags that they're carrying over towards the elevator. There we can see them stepping out at ground level at the pad uh, from a little ways away. And they're going to take a look up at their uh, soon to be their ride into space, Discovery. And they're home for the next two weeks. That's right. <laughs> There you can see Mark as uh, he's climbing in. You can see that's his seat in front of him, so he'll be uh, laying on his back as he climbs in. Kind of an awkward thing. Here he has to grab some handholds that are up above and get his feet in around the uh, stick, which is covered by a red box there. You can see the 
the rotational hand controller as it's referred to. And you can see in his seat behind him, the orange um, is uh, the parachute that he will then attach to his harness. If they did have to egress the vehicle, um, may end up taking the, that with him, most likely. And uh, if uh, they're just egressing on the ground, obviously, if you're bailing out, you'll definitely be taking that with you yes. and, uh, and using it. And there you can see Greg climbing into the, uh, the furthest seat over to the starboard side, the right side of the uh, mid-deck. Ray Cuevas, number seven, uh, in the white suit there, is helping Greg to strap in. Here we can see Mark Kelly now getting his helmet put on. You can see Kay uh, kind of behind and below him. And John Hazelhurst, uh, just to Mark's right, they're both going to help him to uh, make sure he gets that helmet on with a good seal, doesn't trap any kind of fabric or uh, uh, any other part of the suit in there. You can see Ken Ham now climbing up into his pilot seat. View looking across the cockpit from the right side. I would imagine the crew looks forward to getting their cooling hooked up because uh, that's a, a fairly strenuous maneuver there, getting yourself pulled up into that seat with an extra 100 pounds or more on your, uh, on your body and, and a constrained environment. So uh, and you're in the sun. You're in the sun, and you've been, they've been off cooling and since they uh, left the Astro van. So they're probably starting to get a little warm. Mike Fossum climbing in on the mid-deck and about to join Greg Shamatoff, who's uh, got his helmet and gloves on now. Hey, there's Aki pointing to our patch. Proud <laughs> peacock. Excellent. He knew you were watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very proud of him. Uh, he's a great, a great friend to all of us, and uh, we're just excited to see him get to fulfill his dream. He was selected by the Japanese uh, Aerospace Exploration Agency in 1999 and then joined our NASA class in 2004 along with Satoshi and Naoko. So Aki's waited quite a while for this and uh, we're really excited to see him get this opportunity. An OTC of ECC, MS-4, on board 15 seconds ago. Double. A double OS OTC. Dead. Can you verify 677? Complete. Thank you. OTC? OTC go. TBC. TBC is go. TTC. TTC is go. LPS. LPS go. Houston flight. Houston flight is go. Milo. Milo go. STM. STM is go. Safety console. Safety consoles go. SPE. SPE is go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. SRO is go. You have range clear to launch. And CDR. CDR is go. And launch director NTD, our launch team is ready to proceed at this time. Okay. Copy that, Jeff. Thanks. Chief processing engineer, verify no constraints to launch. Mike, the uh, engineering team is ready to go. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. KC safety mission assurance. KC and safety mission assurance is go, Mike. Thank you, Mark. Bill, launch manager. Space station team's ready to go, Mike. Good, thanks, Bill. Range weather. Weather has no constraints for launch. Very good, Kathy. And ops manager. Let's see, launch director, ops manager on 212, Mike. Uh, the MMT is not working any issues. You are go to launch. Okay, thanks, Leroy. Discovery launch director. Okay, Mark, it's a, it's a gorgeous day to launch, so on behalf of the KSC launch and processing teams, I'd like to wish you good luck, Godspeed, as you deliver the next piece of Kibo to the International Space Station. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Uh, you're right, we're going to deliver Kibo, or Hope, to the space station. And while uh, we all tend to live for today, today the discovery from Kibo will uh, certainly offer hope for tomorrow. Uh, meet us on Arigato, Ite Kimasu. Uh, now stand by for the greatest show on Earth. Thank you, sir. NTD, with that, you are clear to launch Discovery. 
Copy that. Thank you, sir. TLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. Discovery OTC, best of luck delivering the GM module to the International Space Station. Discovery copies. Thank you, Teresa. The goal has been given to retract the orbiter access arm. It's the walkway that the crew uses to get inside and outside of Discovery. And if the need arose, we could uh, move it back into position within a few seconds. DLT, perform APU pre-start. And that's in work. Final test of the flight control surfaces. Being done with a pre-programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the, the engines and other flight surfaces are ready. That includes moving the three-man engines, and that's how Discovery steers its way into orbit. Top of the external fuel tank, known as the beanie cab, being removed at this time. DLT, caution and warning memory clear is complete with no unexpected errors. Copy. Discovery, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Discovery and work. TLS is go for ET LH2 pressurization. Coming up on go for auto sequence start. The computers on board Discovery control the spacecraft. TLS is go for auto sequence start. 25. T-minus 25 seconds and counting. 20. T-minus 15 seconds and counting. 10. 10 seconds. We have go for main engine start. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of shuttle Discovery. Gambate Kudasai. Best of luck to the International Space Station's newest laboratory. Houston and Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery, a man-made rising sun on behalf of Japan. Discovery on the proper alignment, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. Six seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery already five miles in altitude, eight and a half miles downrange, traveling almost a thousand miles an hour. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Mark Kelly, joined on the flight deck by pilot Ken Ham, flight engineer Ron Garan, and mission specialist Karen Nyberg. Down on the mid deck are Mike Fossum, Aki Hoshide, and Greg Shamatov, heading for a half year on the International Space Station. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Discovery 22 miles in altitude, 23 miles downrange, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Copy staging. Booster officer confirms staging, a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The onboard computer steering the shuttle for the on-ramp to the highway for the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange, traveling 3,200 miles an hour.
The orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Discovery with a burst of power for the next two minutes, 15 seconds. Roger, two engine morale. That call from Mark Kelly, the first of a series of performance calls in the event of the loss of a main engine. However, all three main engines continue to perform normally, along with the auxiliary power units and the three power-producing fuel cells. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the large fuel tank. Discovery 52 miles in altitude, 100 miles downrange, three and a half minutes into the flight. We're coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle would be too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. All three main engines continue to function normally, however. Three minutes, 47 seconds into the flight. Discovery flying straight and true, speeding toward a date with the International Space Station on Monday. Discovery Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. All of Discovery systems in great shape. Four minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, Discovery 62 miles in altitude, picking up speed, 170 miles downrange, traveling 5,300 miles an hour. The environmental systems officer reports the activation of the flash evaporator system, providing cooling for Discovery's avionics and other systems until the time that the payload bay doors are open an hour and a half into the flight. Four minutes, 40 seconds into the mission. All the main engines, right down the money, in good shape, good performance, good auxiliary power units, good fuel cells. Discovery traveling 6,000 miles an hour, 66 miles in altitude, 230 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Five minutes into the flight, three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. Very quiet here in the flight control room. Discovery Houston, press to ATO, select Istris. Roger, press to ATO, we'll select Istris. That call acknowledged by uh, Commander Mark Kelly, indicating that uh, in the event of a loss of a main engine, we could still make our abort to orbit targets. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. The orbiter will soon begin to roll to a heads-up position. Now beginning that roll to heads-up, the main engine's now swiveling. The shuttle rolling to its position above the fuel tank, gaining more favorable communications to the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Six minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling almost 10,000 miles an hour, 397 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Your shutdown plan is nominal, and your go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Copy that, Terry. Copy the boundary. Nominal shutdown plan. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Good read back, and you are pressed to Miko. Roger. Press to Miko. Press to main engine cutoff call by Commander Mark Kelly indicating should we lose a main engine, we can still make our nominal main engine cutoff targets. However, all three main engines hang in perfectly, as well as the auxiliary power units and the fuel cells at the seven minute mark into the flight. Discovery now 515 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 11,000 miles an hour. Very soon, the main engines will once again be throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its seven crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Houston, single engine press 104. Roger, single engine press 104. At the time of main engine cutoff, a little more than a minute from now, Discovery will enter its preliminary orbit at a speed of five miles a second. Discovery 615 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, looking great. Engines now throttling back. Less than a minute of powered flight remaining for Discovery. Traveling 14,000 miles an hour, 
almost 700 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Discovery passing 23,000 feet per second at the eight minute mark into the flight. A flawless ascent so far for the orbiter. Standing by for main engine cutoff. That'll be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Copy, Nico. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. Standing by for external tank separation. External tank separation confirmed. Discovery now in its preliminary orbit. The centerpiece of Japanese space science, Kibo, completing the first leg of its journey to the International Space Station. Coming up on the one hour mark of Discovery's flight uh, since its launch from the Kennedy Space Center at 4.02 p.m. Central Time. That launch uh, was viewed by the crew on board the International Space Station, which Discovery is headed for for a docking on Monday afternoon. Commander Sergei Volkov, uh, Flight Engineer Oleg Kononenko, and Flight Engineer Garrett Riesman, who is uh, soon to be replaced by Greg Shamatov, who will spend a half year on the complex. Uh, you are watching a replay of uh, them watching the launch as it occurred uh, just about an hour ago on a TV feed that was uplinked to the International Space Station watching uh, off of an onboard laptop computer in the Destiny Laboratory of the station. Volkov and uh, Kononenko were launched uh, on a Soyuz spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on April 8th, arriving on the station April 10th. Riesman was launched aboard the shuttle Endeavour to the International Space Station back in March on the last mission. Riesman uh, wrapping up three months on board the complex. Uh, he will be replaced uh, by Greg Shamatov, uh, the swap out of crew members uh, to occur uh, within a few hours after docking on Monday when Riesman and Shamatov uh, exchange custom-made Soyuz seat liners. That will mark uh, the official end of Riesman's tenure as a station crew member and the official beginning of Shamatov's six months on board the station. Discovery Houston, we've got a beautiful view of Kibo and uh, Texas behind you there. And you are go for orbit ops. Yeah, Terry, uh, thanks. Uh, copy the great view. It's great to be back in space. And uh, we've got block, I didn't let you know, we had block 7 complete, 18, and uh, block 20 is in work, and block 5 is on work, in work on the midday. Hey, copy all. Thanks for the update. 